extra, extra, read all about it. Take a gander at Turbuckle Tabloid. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, ignition, lift off. I know you a bit. You love those games. I still play them. That's yeah, cool. I, I see that you bring it. Yeah, you bring them to the school. Yeah. How, when you was in Japan, did you did you learn Japanese? Like you learned? Uh, just kind of like the basic stuff that mm. you need. Daily wrestling, living. Um, nothing too big. Uh, did you do like any any typical person who goes to learn a new language? Like you learn the curse words really easy and shit. They pretty much show me all the curse words, <laughs> yeah, like they always do. But Can you spot it like in the the whole caricatures and be like, oh, you just a little bit, a little bit. It's still it's complicated for me. Like my my friend Quiet Storm, he he speaks it fluently, and 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 that's 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 an awesome talent to actually have. Yeah, yeah, because he could just describe exactly what they're writing and how they're writing it, and it's bananas how how they speak and. And you were there for how long? The way it sounds too is very like. How long you was out there for? Uh, three months, like kind of back to back. Yeah. And then I came back for um, promo- promotion called Hustle. Mm. That uh, the guys who funded Pride, they funded that one. I did Hustle twice, and then um, that's the last time I've been back in Japan. Did, when when you're out there and you come in, you come in as this Julio. If guys, you know Julio is like red, like Gano, like complexion, like we are. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> because in case you don't know, finally, finally nailed. I got the big, the big white whale. I got the Moby Dick. I got him in the building, <laughs> TRS studio. I finally got him here. Um, I I think I owe you dinner. That's the re- that's the way I got you here. Oh, Still yeah? early, yeah. I think I might. I think I owe Brian a dinner or something. But you know, oh, we'll work good. on that later. But I finally got <laughs> the man who. Everybody's trying to get for podcasts and shit, but we got him. <laughs> got your boy, Amazing Red. <laughs> Sounds like there was fine chicken in him. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, first of all, I got to say, you are a guy that people need to start, like, really, really acknowledging as, not only just because of your wrestling, because of where, where, like, your upbringing and everything that you've done. I mean, where you've come from. Seriously, I mean... You're a kid, B- Brooklyn born. Yeah. Bushwick. Just well right, raised. Raised in Bushwick. Oh, yeah. Um and just out of the blue, you're all over the country, all over the world. Was wrestling like really the thing you want to start? Because you look like you could have been like the king of hand like handball or something like that. Like right? <laughs> something like that. Was that Nah, yeah. It's it's always been wrestling for me. Um and if it wasn't wrestling, it was something with fighting or uh Entertaining people, like doing stunts outside or like movies. I love karate movies, love wrestling. And wrestling, I think, had the best of both worlds. You can do your own stunts, you can fight, uh, martial arts wise, um, wrestle, entertain fans all in one. So I was like, well, this is where I want to be at. Did you ever do, did you take like gymnastics or anything like that? Or you just did everything on your own? I took one class of of ninjutsu school. Uh, (laughs) One class? Actually, it should be. Fairly close to here. It was Felix Vasquez, mm-hmm. and uh, it only lasted like a month. But I learned a couple of little falls and rolls uh, in that school, and I still use it with me actually. So was this like was was this like when when you so when you when you saw wrestling for the sur- like for the first time? Did yeah. you automatically say this is I got it? This is it? This is what I got to be for part some, of? Yeah, for for weird um, reason I did. I, I felt really um, attached to it. Uh, like found of it, like my my grandfather used to always talk about it, always show me um certain videotapes and everything I saw, I just immediately loved it. And uh 
you could be you could have been talking to me, feeding me food, and I just would ignore it and just watch wrestling. Yeah, it's crazy because we're, you know we're from you know like I, I told uh, Brian Excel, who's also in the building. You don't see him because he already had his time. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I was telling him, like, basically, we're, you know, we're cut from the same cloth with different scissors because we both, you know, come up from Brooklyn, you know. And I, I actually, you actually was in, um, you worked out in one of the gyms of, of a gentleman who used to live in my building, um, Pedro. Uh uh-huh. Yeah, so, like, I knew of you even then. Like, I knew uh, of, of this kid because like, his sons, Angel and Lewis, they would sit there and be like, yo, there's this kid that comes to my, my, my pop gym, yo, he's nice, yo. I mean, I'm still champ, though. Like, what? What? Like, <laughs> like what? <laughs> but and you how you champ any case um <laughs> but yeah you 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 know i knew you came up from there and uh did you ever do like like street shows when you were like that age like do you used to have like the block parties and shit and they'll throw up the ring and all I that remember pa- uh working for page well not working for pedro but um i used to go to his uh his ring and we used to pay maybe 10 15 dollars a day right every time we were there and we had a little own promotion called tew uh, as far as getting trained or, or getting showed the ropes and, and this and that, no one has taught us. So we were just in there kind of like whatever we saw on TV, we actually try to do it in the ring. Right. Um, so, you know, some of us knew, I guess, how to do it and, and didn't hurt our bodies as much. Mm. Some of us didn't. But as far as Pedro being the trainer, teacher or anybody in there, right. uh, nothing happened, but he did have shows a couple of months mm. in, in and uh, he would ask if he wanted to be on it. And I did two or three of those. And they were downstairs in the gym mm. of the building. And uh, I think it was Best Eye. Yeah, because they used to have the, they used to come out of the, there was a, there was a church. They had yeah, a gym yeah. as well. It was it on was, Lewis. The training and, was in the second floor of, of uh, the church. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so, so that, that, was that your early like beginnings of, of getting ring work? I, I didn't even know I was in the show. I just thought I was just, you know, <laughs> just being used as a favor. But apparently this was a show I was supposed to be getting paid for. It. Right. Uh, but I never, Ask for money. I was just happy to be there. And but this is this was like your first ring time official. Like yes, you didn't even yeah, know you were yeah. doing it. It was uh ninety at the end of ninety seven, ninety eight, beginning ninety eight. Mm. Uh, was it fifteen, sixteen years old? Yeah. What did your family think about this? Like, like you know, cause, I, my you know, mom always hated it. But. So somebody come to me and says, <laughs> "My kid comes up to me and like, I want to be a wrestler." I was like, "Of course, really." That's, that's every parent's yeah, first reaction. Really? It has to be. Um, I know because, we like it, but it's not that much. Not pa tanto. So you're crazy. Right? <laughs> you know what it is is that is wrestling is very is very painful uh, mentally and physically. And it's just your they you know we see the parents uh, uh, they see, we see the the painful aspect of it first. Right. Uh, slamming yourself on wood, hitting the turnbuckles, getting punched and chopped in the face, um, traveling here and there, and you know hearing about the drug stories with the steroids and people dying at thirty. They don't want you involved in that. Well. We don't want you involved in that, and I understand that. But yeah, because you're a parent now, and like I, I see your kids, beautiful kids, and they both I, want to be wrestlers. How so is it I'm that? Yeah, exactly. That's what I said. You have them both. It's like <laughs> I'm in both. trouble now. So yeah, and it that's that's the thing. Now it's like you you got a little girl, you have a little boy, especially yeah. and to think like your little girl, you sit there, you look at, he's like, oh my my princess, I'm my princess, mm-hmm. like yeah, I don't know if I would want to see her take a chest chop. Like I don't know. I mean, I mean that part I'm fine with because I I know that my kids will will take. It's just. The emotional part of it, you know, how dudes are toward girls in the business, right. how how just promoters and people treat girls differently than uh, even my girl students. Um, it, I was just trying to show them, listen, when you're in here and, and we want to teach you exactly what, what's going around, you know, like I don't want to like hide things from people. Yeah, you don't want to sugarcoat it for them. Yeah, because when they go out, they're like, wait, I never heard about this. I never got taught this. So. Try to tell them the real thing, and, and guys are are you know they're, they're jerks, and so are women. And women hate each other more than guys hate each other for some reason. <laughs> as soon as women comes on the scene, it, automatically you're gonna see hatred right away. But that's just the way that women treat each other. Uh, I told them that with hard work and you know just doing what they're doing, you can't hate respect. So yeah, but that's just, you know that you know the thing about it is like you guys come together, you guys you, you get to school. Mm-hmm. You know, it was something that. I don't know. It, it, to me, I thought that you, you were already like out there. Like you, you, I don't think you were ready like to come back home. Like you, you, you were out seeing the world. Like I saw you was, you know, TNA and the injury stuff. And then I, you was, you were out. Then yeah. all of a sudden I hear you opening up a school mm-hmm. and I was like, that's fucking dope. But like, was that, was that like an attention for a long time that you wanted to do? Like you wanted to get back to the computer? Like the we, computer? Yeah, we did just because, uh, the lack of schools that there were, uh, for me to find Mikey's, um, which was, our last um, 
the last class of House of Hardcore. Right. And Mikey was such an awesome teacher. I just wanted to do something what he did for us and just kind of do it to the fact that you don't have to be this huge seven foot, 300 pound man to be, mm. to pursue, you know, uh, your career in pro wrestling, which you guys see now, um, on Raw and SmackDown, TNA, ROH, everybody who's pretty much legit and, and almost in the main event picture, we're smaller guys. Right. So, um, you know, we could hold our own and I, I wanted to open up a place where it was like that. And me and Brian always thought about doing this and, uh, it ended up happening faster than I thought. It's funny because when we were coming away, especially when you were coming up, you, you had Doghouse and you mm-hmm. had, you know, yeah, you know, Mikey and all that, but you didn't, there wasn't a lot. There wasn't a lot no, of places no, that I knew. And now all of a sudden, everybody. And to be, yeah, and to be honest, as soon as, I mean, the only one that I really knew about at the time was, um, uh, uh, the New York City, uh, um, New York, uh, New York City wrestling. wrestling with, um, with, um, at the, NYWC? Yeah, NYWC. Yeah, at the yeah. My mom. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, with him, like, that was the only one I really know. Mm-hmm. And then, um, all of a sudden you guys came up and then another school's coming up, another school comes up and everybody just started popping up out of nowhere. Yeah. But when that happened, the same time, everybody started falling on the wayside. You guys stood strong, man. Like, you, you guys are really like, committed to these kids man and mm-hmm. it's great i love to see the videos on that what is it that makes you want to keep doing it for them like why like why continue because i you know you know, you're into the age you're a family guy you know, yeah you know how I, it's 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 honestly is is i think it's just god leading me into that way um i'm very uh into into god and, and and being a christian me and brian we we always listen to our hearts and we always listen to what god puts in front of us me and brian are sinners on a daily basis but mm-hmm. Nobody's perfect, but I mean, he's always shown us the door. He's always shown us what to do. And I feel like, uh, even the problems that I had at home, the problems that I had outside of home, it was always le- you know, leading me to House of Glory, uh, to these students. And I think that was like my kind of like kind of calling. Um, if, if I didn't pursue wrestling as much, but I did have people that I had to look out for because we're not just a wrestling school. Like uh, a lot of students will tell you in there, we're, we're legit family and whatever they going through, we go through with them and we help them out and, and we help each other out. They helped me out also when I was going through my injury. And, um, a lot of them in there are just kids that just need to be talked to and, uh, you know, shown, shown love actually. And, uh, wrestling is a really good way of doing it. Yeah. Um, if you had enemies, you wrestled them, they end up being your friend. <laughs> and, you know, it's, and it's, it's funny because I, they come through these doors. They've been in studio. I had a, a, you know, a few, you got your guys come in here mm-hmm. and there's, it is general admiration for what you and Brian do. Like, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, they'll, they'll go through schools and they already know it's all, you know, they're all about the money, mm-hmm. you know, but for you guys, you guys are, are consistently, you know, either good cop, bad cop, bad cop, whatever it is, you guys are always there. I, how, how is it that you're able to balance that? Cause like I said, you're a family guy. You had, you know, you had a career going, you know, then you know, mm-hmm. I know, you know, you've been with your wife for so many years. Mm-hmm. You know, how, you know, how, how is it that you were able to still like balance that? Because you still are trying to get that, you know, that crack. You're trying to get that, that yeah. one last shot. Uh, as well, so. well, I have a great partner, yeah. uh, Brian, every time, uh, I would be away busy doing my thing and he would be there taking care of everything. Like I'm putting everything on his shoulders and whatever he used as help, you know, helped him out. Are you only saying that because he's in the room? Because other than that, you could talk crap about him. Uh, no, no. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm just trying to speak like legit uh, facts here. And, uh, this a shoot? <laughs> yeah. When I'm there, I, I take care of the, the class and I train them and, um, uh, definitely problems with the family. But this is always a struggle, no matter if you have a nine to five or not. You know what I mean? Um, there's always problem with, um, I guess finding a balance between work, love, passion, and then your right. family kind of thing. So what I was trying to do was find a medium into both of them. And I didn't find it in time. So, uh, I mean, I think that, like I said, not that I think I know that it was this path and mm. I'm continue with this path. And like my, my kids love it. My family has really been there for me. They love it. And they know this is like my passion and what I've been here for. And, you know, as soon as I, like you were saying earlier, how a lot of schools opened up, a lot of things opened up after us. And then a lot of them just kind of go away um, quietly. Mm. Um, the reason why I think it doesn't ha- hasn't happened to us is just because of how real we are with our guys and, and how real we are with our promotion and with our students. Um, it's, it's just, it's a different, it's a different, um, feeling than everybody else's school. You know, we don't, we're not in there for the money and stuff like that. Mm. We don't, you can ask any one of our students, you ask people who joined, left, and then came back. Right. Um, it's just a feeling that you will never get anywhere else. And 
Um, not to sound cocky or anything, but I know what I'm talking about when it's about professional wrestling. People yeah. may not see me use whatever I use for like in wrestling for the full advantage, but as far as me knowing what to do and knowing how to do things, I I, I pretty much can teach everybody anything. So, yeah. so just to go back from your early days and, and yeah, you grew up in Brooklyn, grew up in Bushwick, and you know, like I said, it's not. Many of us who would sit there and say, I'm going to, I'm going to grow up to be a professional wrestler. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of us is either, you know, we slinging rocks or we're, um, trying to be in the hip hop game or sing reggaeton, whatever it is. <laughs> and then whatever kind of mix we're trying to get into. Mm -hmm. Like, did you, did you have to battle those evils growing up? Like, um, did, did you have that? Thank up? God I haven't. Um, I, I never did because I, I was, a lot of people who know me know I was pretty much different from the crowd. Mm. I never liked mixing with that kind of crowd. Yeah. I always was on my own thing. Like, uh, even when I started going to like on the road, it's kind of like on the road stuff and, uh, was traveling with a couple of vets, you know, I'm not going to say which guys it was, right, but right. they would be there, you know, with the drugs and steroids thing, right? and, uh, you know, um, just, just like kind of inviting to every kind of sin there was in the world. Yeah. That, and for some reason I just would, pack my Nintendo or PlayStation and be my, by my own in my hotel room being called a herb. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, um, just staying there late night, they didn't chill and, and do stuff with no ring rats and no. you know, stuff like that. Um, I, I just thought of that my own way. Like, why would I put myself in this predicament? You know, if I know the results of it and, uh, I was kind of blessed of knowing that at an early age and I, I never mixed with that kind of crowd. Um, cousins, family, friends who did it. I kind of just stood away, not in a disrespectful way, but just kind of like, look, I don't do that. And then at the end of the day, they respected that mm -hmm. that was who, you know, who I am. Like a lot of my students don't curse around me. Uh, they don't say certain things around me right. just because of how I, how I am in front of them. Um, and I, I think I just kind of built up that re reputation for myself and I never had to face those, those evils because I never, I, I knew better than that. Right. Yeah. It must have been tough, you know. Like I said you, you and your wife have been together since you guys were teenagers. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, you on the road for months on end and mm. weeks on and stuff. Like, it, you know, it must have been tough to put a strain on the relationship and for you guys to still be together for this long. Like, what, what do you think has been the core of that? Like, what do you think has been the thing that's been keeping you guys like? Well, let me just update you right now. Um, I've been divorced for like a year now. Get the hell out of here! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Well, that's why I didn't need my heart. I, I, your, I just so... felt like it was something that, you know, I didn't need to bring up to anybody, oh, but, no. um, yeah. So I guess since you scared to bring that up, I was just like, let me just tell them. Cause you want me to edit it or <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's real. It's real. But you know, um, it wasn't more so. Still, it's still a long that. time. It's still a long yeah, time. Man. I mean, it, it was hard. It was definitely hard. Um, no matter what I did or what happened, mm -hmm. it was just that I needed someone to like back me continuously, you know? Uh -huh. Um, I think, uh, us as men, we need our, our women our, to, to back us up on whatever we, we go through right. just to keep us strong. And then in return, we give them the love that they deserve and they give us the respect. I think that's just how relationships should be. Um, and uh, a lot of times that did not happen on both our ends. I'm not going to, you know, point fingers here. Right. But um, wrestling is a real tough business. But I know that with a, a really good, strong partner, you know, we would have made it like that. So, you know, things happened. Um and uh, I'm still with my kids. I still have yeah. uh, 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 contact with um, the mom, you know, yeah. my ex. And um, I'm going to keep it like that, you know, just yeah. keep moving forward. Oh, you my just... God, we're soulmates. We're both red. We both <laughs> went through a tough divorce. Like, oh, my God, we're bonding here. It's, it's, it's human life, I guess, it's right? It's amazing. No, no, and, and it's, it's, it's true what you're saying because now that, you know, with the transition now, especially how you've been – you know, rehabbing yourself. And I guess now you're rehabbing physically, mentally, and emotionally. Like yes. everything's coming together. Yes, sir. But, uh, I, and now I can see why what, what, what the school has been doing for you now and yeah. with the motor, you know, the motivation to get these kids out there. And that's the thing though. Like a lot of the kids and, you know, not even kids. Cause now, you know, the young, young adults, young men and women that you have, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I got to say that a, a lot of schools, you see individuals who come out of their school and they, they still, look green they still and not even ring wise like mentally they're still mm -hmm. unaware mm -hmm. of what's going on you guys really sit and nurture that you mm -hmm. browbeat it you put it in Definitely. there and um for, I, like i said i gotta commend you for that because like i said they come in here you know the, the hank flanders the new york new york wrecking crew uh I, i've had these they, they come to sit here and they're like constant professionals man and even that's if i great. would joke and ill will like i do a red's voice or a brian voice people chill we'll talk about my trainer like that like they they, 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 they still great. legit with it it's funny because they they came in 
really, you know, really good kids, but obviously they were hiding who they really were. Mm. And then when I got to see who they really were, some of them just had like a lot of struggles and problems. Some of them still do, but when they go out and they, you know, they're like, uh, kind of representing Hog and me and Brian, right. they're, they're very respectful, very like they learned there, you know, it's like they, they're actually transforming as man, women, like right in front of our faces. And it's crazy that we're a part of that. It's kind of cool. Uh, I could be a part of it. Now I have my, on my notes here, I says that you're very hard to deal with business wise. Like you're a tough guy to, to actually uh, work with because you're very shrewd and, and have a very, no, wait, sorry. No, that's um, that's a note from Brian's in there. Sorry. I was just going to say, was that, was say was that from Brian? That's Brian's. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, one thing I have to say is that everybody gives that whole underlining tone that red is that guy. Like he's like the, you know, the coolest dude to deal with. And it's funny to hear that because in this business, you know, they tell you, you know, you got to be shrewd somehow that you got to have like, you know, you have to have to be a manipulative type of person to be in wrestling. Mm -hmm. But for some reason that hasn't like, that hasn't flowed with you. Like you've been able to like still be recognized as like a chill dude to do business with. Like I, it, your representation, your representation does perceive you. Like how, like how, how could that, like, how did you manifest that? Like how, how is it that you worked that? I guess it was just from, uh, what was happening, you know, back in the day with me and how, I would uh, take to like different um, occasions. I don't know. I, I just, I just feel like, why would you have to be like that? You know, mm. I, I, I feel like it's less of a, of a fight, less of, of effort to, to try to right. be what I'm not. And I'm not um, like gassed up like that. You know, I, I know where I'm from. I, I'm always going to know that. I know exactly who I am. Um, I had a hard time finding out how big I am in this business, right. but I've been learning that little by little day by day, but it's still nothing to throw in no one's face. Um, mm. uh, a lot of people, if I do shut them out or they feel like they shut out, it's because of, uh, uh I just like to, right now, especially, I just want to be around positive people, people who are helping me, you know, achieve my goal while I'm helping them achieve their goal. Right. And I just want to keep my circle nice and clean. People who want to push and help and everybody else, I'm not sending them to go somewhere. I'm right. just saying, just step out for a second and let me do my thing. It's just because a lot of times, like, even when Brian calls me and texts me, I just, from the stuff that I'm doing, I just can't hit him up right away. No. And uh, I, I think I just need to do this for myself just because I've been doing so much for everybody else uh. that I forgot, you know, it was about me uh, at a certain point. Because if you can't take care of yourself, you can't take care of nobody else. So, uh. so I'm trying to do first. Guys. I, I gotta cut you off because y'all not gonna sit here and listen to it. I'm not giving you all this. Make sure you check out TRSS, the regular season sportscast at trsspodcast.com. And this will be the first exclusive interview on the new TRSS Turbicle Tabloid. The segment is going to be separate from the show now. Now, Turbicle Tabloid has its own episode sponsored by House of Glory. How did I do that? I don't know. But once again, check us out, TRSS Podcast. Uh, we're gonna continue. Y'all gotta go later. <laughs> so, it's funny that you said that because I, I was going to ask you the same thing. Like, when, when does it become about you? Cause now, like I said, there's still stuff that you have to accomplish. Like you've, you, yeah. I mean, you, a lot of people could right now. Thank you. A lot of you guys, a lot of people could have just walked away right now. Mm -hmm. You've, 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 you've reached a certain level, right? You, you TNA yeah. three time. I, I can't champ, do you've that. Done that. Like you, you've, you could say at 35, you probably accomplished more than any wrestler has done. And like probably a mo majority of wrestlers has done in their whole career. Like you could call it right now. Like what, what, what right now feeds you to say, no, I got to keep going. Uh, my students, my kids, my, my passion, who I am as mm. a person, I can't let it happen like that. Um, as long as I'm still walking, there's still a chance. So, um, like I said, like I said before the, the surgeries, um, they kind of put a big, uh, stoppage on it, especially on my dream. And, and at one point it was a big scare that they might have to like, get rid of the leg just to stop infection. It wouldn't right. be that bad. But I was thinking right there, even though some people around me were still saying, this is a sign from God saying you shouldn't wrestle anymore. I told you you shouldn't be in it. I was just like, oh, well, you know, I kind of took it to, to my own that it was for a reason and whatever happens now, I'm just going to have to go with it. And uh, I've been doing great on my own. Um, I got the third surgery from uh, a, a doctor, a really good friend of mine, Dr. Goldman, mm. and uh, he helped it, fixed it. And it just was me and him and then the physical therapy and everything. And a year later, like I'm wrestling with the students again, doing rolls, flips, jumps. So. Yeah. I see you on snap. Like you still you, like right now, you look good. You're looking really, yeah, you look good. Right? So. You're getting tip, right? But is there, when you get into the ring and you're working out with the kids and especially with them, like, you know, they're still learning. Yeah. Uh, do you, do you like 
do you have to like be like walking on eggshells because you you know you're not sure whether or not you should be doing a certain move here? Yeah, yeah, of course, get... of course. Because now I have to be more careful because like we were bringing up earlier is now is 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 more of uh, caring about myself and mm. what I want to do and what I have to do. So I have to be more careful, more um, uh, like aware of just what's going on around me and like even the smallest step on the smallest crack on the outside or or the, the sidewalk can just turn me right back up. So is any is any moves that we we we're going to see going to retirement? We're not see any, <laughs> any anything's going in the I show. I mean, even when I when I when I came back, uh, even to wrestle this guy, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Branks of the cage match, I was hurt before that, mm. and I was I was kind of like. A little too overweight for what I wanted to put pressure on my knee with. Oh, we didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I had a couple of months. I came back really good for that, and that's when I continued it. And I wrestled with Brian Ray Mysterio, mm -hmm. and uh, I kept it on from there. And then that's when the thing happened. Mm -hmm. But um, I always brought back what I used to do just to show people that I still would have it. And um, I mean, I'm not dumb now to the fact that I would just do it just to break it. And, you know, on purpose, yeah. but I have to be careful because it is an ankle injury and in any sport, especially, uh, especially ankles, they, they just yeah. they go like that. You could just, you go, like you said, you go walk in the crowd. Like me, I'm, I'll walk and I'll just like try to avoid a piece, like a piece of turd on the floor and I'll be, whoop, and I need a wiggle. Yeah, so yeah. just do that little wiggle. And it happens a couple of times. So yeah. I just have to be careful. When you, um, when you, when you, when you rehabilitating, when you're on your, your process back and your, your, you know, your, your mindset is like, yo, I got to do this. I got to get it done. Like, yeah. And you're going full cylinder and you're ready to go. Like what becomes your, your, your stage is like, what, what, what's the thought process? Like, you know, okay, now that I got, you know, now, now I'm walking better. What's the next step? You know, what, what do I start doing? Cause I see you, you've been at the gym. You're, 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 you're in better shape. You're toned up. You know, this is your, you know, I actually thought you was going out for like MMA or some shit like that. You look <laughs> like you was going, like you was about to put it in. <laughs> like what, what, what's like the, what's the, the, the steps that you've been taking to just get back going? Cardio and stuff like that? Definitely cardio. Um, uh, it's, it's more mentally before anything. You just have to mentally put yourself in it. I was talking to Brian again earlier and it's just like the, the worst, the hardest part, the worst part is the first two weeks. Mm. Once you start to get back on it, those, those days suck. And it's <laughs> like you have to re think it in your head. You have to redo everything. You have to, everything is so sore. Everything is so hurtful. And you just go in there with like an attitude like, man. But every time you leave, every time you get that money, every time you, you work out, you feel good. That, that feeling is just, that's what keeps you going. And how, how long do you think we got? You, you have, you have a timetable for yourself? Like when? I mean, since it just hit a year, I was giving myself a year mentally mm -hmm. just to avoid always thinking about it. Cause I, uh, when I tore my ACL, I had to give it a year because I was scared to even land on my feet for anything. Mm -hmm. Um, jumping off stools or whatever the case may be. And, um, my doctor was just said, you know, you're ready to go now. Everything is up to you. It depends on how, how good and how you, uh, process your pain management. Mm -hmm. He said, but it's an ankle injury. You have to be careful. But as far as you wrestling, you can start doing that as soon as possible. Just let me know. And then he'll write me like the okay. So I think mentally, no, I off. think this is, this is the time now. It's coming. It's coming. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm so excited, bro. I'm going to. Cuts my pearls when you get in the ring. <laughs> Speaking of that, you're a young kid. You're, you're, you're coming into the business and you're doing stuff that a lot of people haven't seen before. First of all, where, like, where, like, who are your, like, who, who, who do you, like, inspire? Like, where'd you get your inspiration from? Because, like, during your era, he was like, you know, 92, 91 and all that. There weren't really guys that were doing what you would do, like, you ended up doing. Like, what, where, when did you start saying like, you know, I, I can do a body slam or a suplex somebody, but maybe if I can like put a spin kick into this, like or oh, Pele or something like, mm -hmm. where, where where did you draw this from? Jackie Chan movies. That's you know, it's funny because I was I was actually gonna say that. Too. It's, it's it's um it's a mix of a lot of things. Like I love mask wrestlers. I love Blue Blazer. Once a three kid was really awesome to watch. Um, then when I got my hands on Japan tapes. Misawa Kobashi, Tiger Mask, I was just Sasuke, mm. Hayabusa, I was blown away. And then, um, I, like I said, I just love martial arts. I love Power Rangers <laughs> and how their guys did stunts. You know, I didn't watch Power Rangers for the story. I just watched it for like how they fought and how they did stunts yeah. and how they hit and the kicks they did. Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee, um, you know, just, just things that like nowadays, the Tony Ja and, um, uh, 
um, you know the guy who did um, Borga? Borga? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Scott name is, something. Yeah, name is Scott. Not, not speak, man. It, it escapes me. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's stuff like that. It's just like, you know, this, this is awesome. And, um, uh, me and Loki were the first ones to do like the actual fight scene in mm. the match. And, and it just went crazy from there. Um, where wrestling started changing little by little. It was just, uh, not, you know, chain wrestling mostly. It was just like entertaining to everything, yeah. everybody. And, um, I just started inco- incorporating that with what I was doing just because I, I felt like if I popped to it, if I, if I like was like, wow, that's pretty awesome. I thought people would like to see that in wrestling, you know, um, just because wrestling, a lot of things you can get away with. You know, you, there was like little people doink, right. small doink. <laughs> right. There was a uh, little Fiji, you know, it wasn't people like with gimmicks that yeah. they stole the tires, uh, repo man, you know, right. like stuff like this. <laughs> and, um, you guys remember Berserker? Yeah. Hush, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I figured, you know, nah, this will work. This is a good platform for it. So let me try it out. And, uh, I got like maybe 70% of my moves set just from just thinking, just seeing what they're doing and just kind of putting my own spin on it. So yeah. Okay. I can understand Loki getting involved because that, first of all, that guy's intense. Is he really yeah. as intense as he is in like in real yeah, life? Yeah, like, yeah, he's yeah. like, I, I, he legit would scare the shit out of me to have a conversation. <laughs> I remember one day, and I we were at an ICW, and the guy he just came from WWE. And a matter of fact, he had a match with you, and he did a shoot for like thirty minutes in the middle of the ring, just going off on WWE. And I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah." I was, <laughs> I was scared yeah. to leave, but I can understand him, you know, going into the ring and say, "You know what? Let's do this. Like we 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 can play off like this." How is it that you're coming in, like I said, you're a young kid, you come in doing this stuff and you can, con- you're convincing older guys, some vets to say, listen, uh, I got a move that I want to do. I, 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 how could, how, how would they sit there and be like, oh, I'm not going to let this kid do this to me. It's funny because the crazy thing is that they were the ones who told me, like they're the one that asked me about it. Right. Cause they, uh, I guess when you wrestle for like a bit and you gain their respect, cause, um, when I used to wrestle these guys, these older guys, these vets, um, I kept my mouth shut. I just did what I was told. Um, if I did have an opening to, to say anything of what I wanted to do, I would go in there and say it. Uh, but not, you know, demanding or anything. I would just kind of know my place. Right. And it kind of built relationships with these guys, like, uh, respect. So then later on, they'll be like, that's movie you do, you know, do this here, do that there, right. stuff like that. So, um, they actually just came up to me and started doing that. And, um, I started getting respected for it. And then it just, you know, until I started feeling that I could start calling it myself, uh, it was just them. Did you even know, like, or did you get, have a sense of when you were starting off early and you were, you were pulling this stuff off that the tapes were going around, that people were passing around VCR and DVDs of Mm -hmm. your, your whole move sets and stuff like that. Did you know that was happening? Like, like people were actually growing you slowly, but surely you were growing this fan um, base. Yeah. And I felt a little, not even upset. I don't even know if it was bitter. It's just, it was like, wow, you don't, you're not that creative that you have to take my stuff. But then I started thinking, I did take people's things too, you know, like people before me, which was like Sasuke, Hayabusa, mm-hmm. Rey Mysterio, just cause how small I was as a fighter, I had to copy some of the moves that they did. You know, mm-hmm. I couldn't just do, couldn't stand a big dude. Uh, but when I seen more and more matches that had my stuff in it, like stuff that I legit knew that I, I've done, mm-hmm. um, in the beginning, it was like, you know, a little, little upsetting. But then as uh, I started talking to different people, my trainer and stuff like that, they said, no, leave it alone. It's just, you know, you should be, you should be, you should feel good that, you know, it's, it's flattery. Like they're, they're just doing it because they're giving you a respect out of it. Sure, and even to this day, you got, you got guys who have been, who's already, you know, been in <laughs> WWE and has been in touch who come to you and they say, yo, I remember I had your tape. And mm-hmm. then, like for you to hear that, it, 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 you seem like a humble dude. You'd be like, oh yeah, that's cool. Me, I'd have been like, for real? You, you watch that's myself. the inner, the inner me says that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool. It's cool because, uh, when I first started wrestling, especially in the arena, Puerto Rico, Pedro's, mm-hmm. um, I didn't think it was going to take off like this. I just thought I was just doing something fun every week, every mm-hmm. weekend. And, um, I was just like, you know, 100 pounds soaking wet. I was like, there's no way I'm going to be up there with these big dudes wrestling with them. And little by little, just things started happening. And that's why it's, it's very, I'm very humbled that, I got to where I got to. Mm-hmm. And um a lot of people know my name that are on top right now. A lot of people in big places know who I am and what I did. And um they come talk to me and, and they come check out the school. And I'm very, very humbled and, and happy about that. So it just makes me 
feel like I did something re- like good, you know. So you you mentioned that when you were younger, like you was very. You seemed as though you were a little bit more introverted. Like you weren't. You, you weren't. Were, were you like the weird kid on the block? Like you was that. I mean, that, it, that it just, weirdo. It just, like, like they see you walking on the block, it's like, yo, do a backflip, son. Do a backflip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had a um a story with my uh, my friend Krista. Uh, we would we would wrestle like on the outside, and um, it was at one point there was people walking by. Cause there was nobody there. People walked by and right when they walked by, I whispered to him, make it look real now. And I beat him up with a steel chair. Uh, <laughs> but it, it was just more, if I knew you, if I felt comfortable with you, I would act like myself. I would be normal. Mm. A lot of guys, um, that I'm close with in wrestling, especially guys like TNA, like Sanjay, mm. uh, Alex Shelley, Chris Saban, uh, Jay Lito, guys like that know who, who I really am. Mm. And like, I never, hid from them but everybody else was just like more or less the shy type where it's just like yeah because i you know that's my thing i hear you know you're very low-key and you know very mm-hmm. reserved and shit but then i hear yo know, red is a clown man yo this is a yeah, funny dude yeah. so, and i, I see, heard that a lot too <laughs> <clears throat> I can't a, be. a good friend of a good friend of mine who's a friend of yours as well angel torres he's wrestling he's wrestling yeah, before yes. uh he did the angel, angel the legit angel. knows me yeah yeah like, <laughs> that's what i'm saying like he knows me knows me he um and i saw i, I had i had met you once again through him again Cause you know, like I said, I've met you, I've seen you here and then, and I met through him. And uh, I remember the first night at House of Glory, it was the first the first event you guys did. You had like thirty five people in the building, and I was there calling it with um, Lorenz Dean. Mm. And Angel turns to me, he goes, "Your boyfriend's here," and I, like, Ooh. and I'm like, oh. <laughs> I was like, oh. and when you walked up, and you real cool dude, real nice man. And I was like, wow. I said, you know, that's that's the way a lot of people should be. You know, this is a person who's who's seen a lot, have been around the world, and. You know, there's, there's not an air of arrogance towards you. Like, and, and, and I see, it's a great thing that, like I told you, you're doing that with your kids, man. And I, I gotta say, for the promotion, I know you guys started it as a school. Did yeah. you think that the promotion was gonna be what it is? Like, no, today? I, I, I didn't want the promotion, actually. Uh, Brian brought it up and I was just like, nah, I don't want the headache. I see what promoters go through. I see what the students go through. Um, I didn't want a promotion because it interferes with training and then some students get gassed up. Mm-hmm. Some students get sidetracked. Some students end up wrestling and come into training just to be on the show. And I just thought that wasn't fair. Mm. Um, a lot of these students nowadays, especially these kids nowadays, they wrestle and they get their tapes the day of, or they get their matches the day of. And, and that's, that's very, uh, like to me, I would wrestle and then get like very my, presumptuous of them. Very, like, yeah, that's like VCR tape. I would get it like, uh, weeks, months after right. you know, our video or smart mark video had it. And, um, it's just like this generation is very, they have, they have this quick fix and they want everything now, now, now. And I, that's what I mean about the matches. It's like, oh, I want my match. I don't have my match. I just wrestled. Mm-hmm. And they don't let things settle. They don't let things just chill out. Right. Like, uh, well, you guys want to watch a movie. You got Netflix. You got all this. Everything nowadays is very quick fixy. And, uh, they're like that still in wrestling. And I'm trying to take that away. Like you have to, you know, everything that, especially something as, as hard as, as pro wrestling, it just needs time. You need patience. You need to, to know how to like relax. And these people, they just, you know, it's, it's a drug. As, as, as like soft spoken as you are, I can't, I can't imagine you being like that heavy father figure critical on, mm. on, on your students. Do you like, you like really give it to them? Like, cause honestly, I would be the, if I would see that you were pissed off or you were upset, I know I fucked up. Like I know I was, I know I did something. A lot wrong. of them said that. So. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> we, we see Brian off the hook. It's like, yeah, all right, we know that's his, this yeah. thing. But you, like, we know we, like, you, you were pissed off. I'm like, damn, I really yeah. shit the bed. Like, that's really bad. Do you, do you often like, do you do like their breakdown, uh, during training? Always. Or, Always. Or do you critique them after their matches and stuff like that? Because you know, you're very, you don't even see you at the shows. Yeah. You're very, you're very, uh, you're I'm very... always, I'm always around though. Yeah. I have to, I have to keep, I have to keep, uh, you know, uh, incognito, mm. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm always there. Um, they have matches, they have drills or whatever the case may be. I'm always there to tell them if they need it. Um, the critiques, I'll have them come up to me and say, what did I do wrong today? Or what did I do to fix it? And I'll tell them when it's time, I'll tell you. It's, mm. it's, if I didn't come up to you and tell you it was wrong, then don't worry about it. Just keep doing what you got to do. Um, there's been a couple of times where I had to really give it to them because they really do deserve it. Uh, a lot of them get very lazy. A lot of them get very, um, very spoiled. And I go saying, Brian, to do this promotion, like, I'm going to need a lot of help because it's, it's doing two is very hard. Mm. And then also now when you have promotion, you have friends in the business and a lot of them are going to try to either 
come help you or come look for easy, you know, paydays. I'm like, yo, what's up? I thought it was your boy. He put me on the show. Right. And the thing is that we were doing it for the students, you know, giving them a, a platform, giving them like their shine. And, uh, it, it's very hard to, to, to do the boat, to, to, the, to do the two. So, um, Brian handles a lot of that, a lot of that. And then I handle a lot. Of the yeah. Training. I see the punk a lot of kids. I, I, I laugh. I, I think it's hysterical. <laughs> I think it's hysterical. You have to, you definitely have to. What? Well, you, you speak, you, uh, we're talking about, you, you know, like I said, you're very soft spoken. How is it that you were able, well, I can, I, I can pretty much tell how you was able to pull it off because, you know, your, your actions speak or spoke louder than anything else. But you were a guy who hardly did any mic work, any promo work mm-hmm. and all that, but you were still like, do you, do you hate doing that? Like, is, it, is that a drudgery? Did you like um, not having to do that? I, I think it's just lack of doing it that kind of scares me. No one asked you to do it? Like, no, like, um, like, uh, when I was training with Mikey, uh, there was never promo class or promo time. Right. So, you know, this little shy kid on top of being small shy kid, mm. uh, to talk in front of these big wrestlers, I, it was never available for me. And I think the only times it was avail- available for me, I was using it like my first few times of, of testing it out. Mm. So I haven't found my niche with it. And, uh, when CNA were going to do it, they did it with Don West and they used Don West as a mic piece. Right. And what I heard was that, Sooner or later, they're going to get rid of him and have me kind of like shut him up and then talk to myself. Okay. That was the buildup. And Don West is a perfect person to learn from because mm. he's awesome. That's, that's his thing. He, yeah. just, he uses his mouth to sell things to you. Mm. And um, never happened. Uh, I had something else with my, my brother Crimson. Right. Um, was going to do some funny skits, some funny videos. Never happened. Um, so, I mean, I just feel like I was never given the ball on that because people didn't really trust me with it. Mm. And I just never learned from there. Uh I know what to do for promos. I know how to come out. It's just like everybody else. You just need practice at it. A lot of people who were bad in WWE with promos before, mm. they constantly give you that um, platform. And mm. now they're very good now. And people who are crappy as being face promo guys, they're awesome at being heel promo guys. Yeah. I think because everybody inside them is like kind of like a heel. That's why everybody loves heel Yeah, the heel can do whatever they want. They could trip they, and they'll and, still and, and, and like, we, whatever. We, yeah. we love it and we, cause we, we vibe with that. That's what, that's the reason why a lot of people pop to heels now, like mm. bad guys. So it's just, we're all bad guys. We're legit all bad guys. Nobody wants to be a good guy anymore. So things are like easier. Everybody who was really over in WWE, they were awesome as a heel first. Mm. And then they became a good face from there. You mentioned earlier that you, you were drawn to the mask guys, the luchas, the, you know, the, the guys. That's, do you think like subconsciously that's something that is probably more relevant to what like you are since you're like so like you, you're, you're, you're not very boisterous. So, yeah. Like being under I, the mask. I wanted to be mysterious yeah. and not really have to say anything and just show my actions through my, my, my moves and stuff like that. And, uh, I just figured smaller guys had masks just to, to look bigger, to, mm. to, to look more, uh, um, like scarier, you know, to, to the opponent. Cause you know, me skinny, hundred pounds with a red fro, I ain't scaring nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I was just trying to find something and I, I still have his love for, for mask. Um, I wrestled in mask a lot of times mm. in Japan over here, um, uh, for different promotions, even the one that, uh, that went down WRP. Right. Um, it was, a uh, supposed to be a TV series on Netflix, mm. which never happened. Um, and I played a character called Dios Dorado. Oh, I, was that the one with the red mask and the gold? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that was a, that, was a dope that character was funny just because, um, they did a thing with that character because he was like a Napoleon complex. But every time I did a promo as that guy, there was curses everywhere and they would just bleep <laughs> it out. Beep, 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 beep. And I just thought that was cool because the only guy who cursed in the whole show was me. <laughs> I was like, wow. This, <laughs> out of um, all people. Yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> But, um, it, 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 I did a lot of promos with them and, and it was cool. It was fun. And then, and, and, uh, the one I did for, uh, for House of Glory, which was the heel turn was the why red why thing. Yeah. Um, that was just me talking and a lot of people liked it and, and they received it well. And, um, I knew you was turning heel cause you had Tim's on. I was like, Oh, it's good. It's, it's going rap, down. Right? Yeah. It's going down. <laughs> I said, you got facial hair and the, Tim's. The it's beard going was down. going. Yeah, yeah. It's going down, yo. And, um, I just can't, I just can't be a bad guy, man. <laughs> That's what I, I was, I was just about to go to that. I was gonna say like, as soon as that happened, I got hurt again. Reg- regardless of what, regardless of how it is that you paint the picture, everybody goes, "Oh, stop it, man! You can't be like that. You crazy? You just acting crazy right now." Yeah. <laughs> I'm just a good guy at heart. That's a lot of it. Man, you've been in, you've been in a lot of wars with a lot of guys, man. Some good guys in the ring, yeah. man. Low key, uh, especially in the Eastern Seaboard with Danny DeMonto. Like mm-hmm. that's like you guys go, yeah, you've had some big, big, big time matches, like. 
what 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 is your white whale? What what match? I mean, you've you've accomplished the Rey Mysterio. Like, what is your white whale? Yeah. Which one have you like not gotten to yet? Like, what what match you really want to um, that you can obtain? I just think any match actually in uh, the WWE platform right now, like any one of those guys, um, from cruiserweight to heavyweight, I think would be any bit of my goal. Just because mm-hmm. I'm doing it there, um, I was at WWE before, but it was uh, like a dark match. Then I went back for something else, but it wasn't something like performing for them, no matter if it's NXT, like I said, the cruiserweight division or whatever. Mm. I I think anything with them, any one of their guys in their roster, I would be looking forward to now. Mm. Um, I love guys in the independence that's been there with me and, and like the, um, Sammy Callahan, Chris Heroes, um, uh, the newer guys I keep hearing about, like, um, the buzzing, like Willow Spray and, and, um, Guys like that, Ethan Page, and just people mm. like this. Um, I I I want to mix in there with all of them. I just need my uh, my my health back. So uh, listen, yeah. I'm telling you, the moment that happens, I think there's gonna be tears coming. From my <laughs> eyes. Let me tell you, There'll definitely be tears on my. Yeah, eyes. let me tell you when when uh, we recently just seen EYFBO win the Impact Tag Championship as LAX is mm-hmm. up, and the same night the Broken Hardys win the Ring of Honor Tag Champions. I was more hyped that EYFBO won than I cared about the Broken Hardys win because it's like I know them personally because yeah. of you guys, yeah. because of what you guys, you know, you you basically they've been in, up and down the Indies, you know, the, the Easter Seaboard and such. But House of Glory has been the place where they've showcased like on the highest mm-hmm. level, and it's like if I base, like I base, like if I know them, yeah, and to see that happen. You know, it, it's a great accomplishment. Plus, they're, they're holding they're like your us. now. So. Yeah, yeah, they're like us. They came from where we came from. Mm-hmm. They struggle how we struggle. Yeah. And they're real. That's why we, uh, we, 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 we have that thing for them. Um, it's like we want it. So we want the bus with them. Man. And I told them just at the end of their match with, um, Hardys and Dudleys and, uh, my students' private party, I, I told them, I said, this year coming up, you guys have to do something. No more of this indie stuff. You guys have to get out there and do something. Yeah. You know, whatever it is, just go do it. Who, it's who, been who, so long. Who, who, like, who was a big influence? I know Mikey was a, Mikey Whipper was a big guy for you. Like, who was the other guys that uh, gave you the rub and was like, you know, you know. I, I've learned the, from, from a lot of people. Uh, Christopher Daniels is one of them, just being in the ring with him. By the way, that video was, it was hilarious. The one when, when you kicked Xavier. Oh, man. <laughs> he kicked the shit out of you. <laughs> in, inside, inside story to that, uh, it's just that, um, he would always tell me like, you know, he would always kind of like push me around where it's like, hit me. You, I won't feel it. Yeah. You know, don't worry about it. Just hit me. And I was just telling him, I got you. Don't worry about it. I got you. <laughs> said, no, man, I'm bigger than you. He would just be extra. You know, yeah. I'm bigger than you. Hit me. You know, like I, I won't feel it. And, uh, I'm not, I'm not talking about wrestling in general. In general, right. Yeah. You're just a bigger dude. Like, why would I, you know, you can't move me. So make, make sure you hit me. Mm. And I was like, all right. And I made sure that one kick that I didn't swing it with everything. I just made sure that I swung it just like how he wanted. And he was just instantly going to sleep. <laughs> he fell asleep and I didn't know what to do after that. Oh my goodness. He ran outside and Christopher Daniels was like, said what he said. And, uh, he, he just, he just didn't come back to the end of the match. <laughs> the best part of this whole story is at the end of the match, we go to the back and everybody's asking him what happened. He doesn't know what happened. He told them. Was I in the ring with Loki? <laughs> That's his first thing. He just didn't know who he was. And he didn't know who he was in there with. And they said, no, he was in there with Red. And he was like, That's impossible. That's what he kept saying. <laughs> and I walked right by him. I was like, There you go. <laughs> so he got his, his little receipt for that one right yes. there. <laughs> I'm talking yes. all that shit. Oh, but you know, I was in tears, but I had to, I had to I repost it like so many times because I just wanted to hear the video all the time. Like, kick the shit out of you. <laughs> but when you get when you get moments like that. Yeah, when you're in the ring and like you know that you haven't like you you you've had epic matches like you've had like the big thing like and, and I know like the biggest thing probably in your life you know of course I mean your life is the birth of your kids and all that stuff but like what has been like after like after that what's like the next coming of your of your just your livelihood man I know I know um um Christ has been like when when you, you, if not the biggest thing in your life but you know what other what other things have been has been you know motivating you man like like what's the big thing that you had going on it is just it's just house of glory as as a whole i want to bring it to um uh a bigger platform i want to make it uh be known worldwide so it's it's not as known as i want it to be as we want it to be but uh, i know that 
a platform like WWE will help me and what we have and uh, help me as like help me mentally because that's still my dream. Yeah. So WWE is it? It's crazy because you got guys like. AJ Styles was your former tag partner. Yeah. You got some more Joe. Everybody is friends, a, but... that's around me. Yeah, everybody's just like there. Everybody like, Tony Nese is there, is there like, now or went there. But... All, it seems like they're all just sitting there like waiting, like, come yeah, on. You're yeah. you're almost there, brother. Yeah. You're almost there. Can you are you excited that the possibility would be that you become a creative wrestler finally in WWE games and shit like that? That, that could happen for let's, you. Let's find out what it is. I I'm because I've seen excited. the creative wrestlers that people make online and it's god awful. It looks nothing yeah. like you. Yeah. <laughs> I saw I saw a couple of them. <laughs> They look terrible. And right before uh, I got injured, um, I was trying to do my own stuff just to be in the video game myself. Yeah. And then that's when that happened. Yeah, like, but that's the other thing too. They got a lot of motion capture and a lot of motion capture is like your shit. Like a lot of that stuff is but your But they don't have they don't have me doing my own stuff. Exactly. So like that, it's weird. This, this it was coming up to that and then that's when that happened. So I see I, I there's two instances that I, I would watch I would watch WWE and I would go, Ooh. First was um I saw Sin Cara do Spanish fly. And I was right. like Ooh, <laughs> I was like, your, your father says you're welcome for showing you that. <laughs> and then the other one was Cena. And he, he did the code red. And I'm like, okay. Um, first of all, it was terrible. And that's the secondly, like, where are you pulling that one from? Like when you hear instances like that, do you just go, what? Like, did you, like in your mind, do you, I, curse, I just, I just, do you curse in your head? No, I just, didn't see, <laughs> like, that's, that's cool. It's cool to me. You know, I see my stuff on main events, on, on Raw, SmackDown, pay-per-views, whatever it is. Um, especially hearing, Announcers call it code red. It's, 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 it's cool to hear that. You know, it's cool to see that <laughs> because, um, like I said, I feel like I haven't made it or, or done anything really that big because yeah. I haven't been there. But to see that and to see the respect I get from a lot of, uh, wrestling peers, it, it just it, is, is, like I said, it's very humbling. Yeah. You're like it's salt cool. bay. You just, you know, you sprinkle it. It's all there. You just <laughs> sprinkled on there little by little. Yeah. Bit there. So, I mean, I, I mean, if I make it there, let's, let's see if, what happens with that move? <laughs> nah, 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 but, but, um, no, now you're gonna do your moves, gonna, and everybody's gonna think it's somebody else. It's like, oh, he stole course. that from Cena. Because like, <laughs> you know, the newer, the newer fans, uh, it's, it's his. Yeah. You know, he did it there before I did, so it's his. Um, and a lot of people did it before him there. <laughs> yeah. It was Molina. It was uh, Rey Mysterio. It was the um, cowboy guy. Yeah. At one point. That's a, that's crazy. <laughs> I mean, what are you gonna do? Well, listen, I, I know you guys are busy. I got to, I, like I said, there's way more I really wanted to get into. I would love to get more into, but you, you got to come back again. I guess. Yes, sir. I'll have food. I have my hokumai. <laughs> I'll hook you guys up. stomach is growling now. Yeah, but um, I mean, just, just you know, you might not have to because you might, you know, people might already know where you at, but just let them know what social media they can get you at. Oh, yeah, because you're, you're real busy with that. Um, Yeah, uh, like I said, I have a lot of help with that also. So, I mean, you can find me at Amazing Red one and through all the social media platforms, which is Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook, it's it's all there. So all right. uh, I actually have the patent for Amazing Red, the original one. So if you want it, you can talk about it. <laughs> talk about it I checked I checked the Instagram who had Amazing Red, and there was someone with a weird profile pic, but it wasn't you. <laughs> it was it was a weird profile but, pic. Uh, um, it could have been. I, I was, I, there's a phase in my life that I don't really want to talk about. But um, but once again, thank you, sir, for coming in studio, man. I mean, like. It's it's an honor, man. I've been dying. Yo, since I started this podcast thing, I said I gotta get him in here. And yeah. Thank you, thank you, Mister Mister Brian Excel, for making that happen, sir. You're the guy. Uh, we put I put it away, man. I said they only get twenty minutes of it, bro. That's it's, a, it's a tease. Yeah, it's a tease. Yeah, no it's a tease, man. Right? Oh, here you go. Name dropping. Here goes name dropping. Yo, hey, what's up? What's good? What's popping? Not much, man. I spoke to Conan. Um, basically, he just told me. Um, just... Yo, that's exclusive. You can't put that. You can't put that. <laughs> that's business right there. Listen, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll cover business, everything, man. Now that House of Glory everything. is sponsored right. by, 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 you know, uh, the sponsor TRSS and Terminal Tabloid, guys, you know, much love. I've been with you guys from day one, man. Yeah, seriously. Man, I, I, I I've been, I've been, I've been, hashtag regulars is always in the regulars, building. Yes. Man. My I daughter, she loves you. That's why she's shy. She's in the room. She's right? in the room. Yeah, she's hiding. I'm gonna tell her to come out and say bye. But cool. once again, thank you for coming by. You, you know, you dope, man. I, I it's, it's, it's a privilege and honor to be there.